Pickard. Um, let me know that you guys can hear me. Today we're going to talk about the best practice routine for guitar. So I'm going to check in on Facebook and YouTube and make sure you guys can hear me. Um, that's not too loud or too quiet. I know it's been quiet in the past, so I fixed that today. So let me know if that works. Um, and yeah, we're just going to talk a little bit about the best practice routine that you can have. And I'm going to give you tips that I use and, um, you know, my best advice. Also, after about 30 minutes, I'll do a Q&A, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask me them, and um, it'll be a lot of fun. So if you haven't already, please go to our YouTube channel and subscribe, youtube.com slash guitar control. There's a little bell. You can click that and get notifications when myself or other teachers have a new video up. And uh, as always, I'll be doing these live streams every Tuesday and Thursday, so make sure you check them out at 7 Central. Quarv, I think that's how you say your name. Hi, how are you? sing sometimes I sing in these not all the time I don't know that song so it would be interesting if I try to sing it um, awesome yeah let me know if it's louder for all you guys and hopefully it is all right so some of my um, biggest advice is for practicing to stretching is a big one um, stretching and warming up but um, I've done some of that before so I'll show you guys that a little quickly I'm gonna make sure uh, Facebook can see me but yes, so I've talked about this a little bit before too. Um, I had a really, really big wrist injury for a while and I didn't think I was ever going to play a guitar again, to be honest. Um, I was really worried about it and it was, it stunk and now I can and it's fine and it all worked out for the best so that's not a problem. But um, one thing that I learned is to stretch and take breaks. So you have to listen to your body too. If you are hurting or you know it's not great you need to slow down and take a break so I always say stretching is a big one for all my students um, simple stretches so just putting your arm out and gently pushing it back and remember the key to this is gentle so not crazy um, same with the other hand then turn it the other way so like that like that um, across your body just like an athlete, and even over your head, I'll drop my guitar if I do it, but the one where you put your hand over there and you, oh, like that. <laughs> so those are really helpful. Um, I also like the ones where you do each finger. So every single finger you pull back. Gentle, gentle, arm straight though. I should have my arm straight. This way, this way, this way. And same with your other hand. Right, so like that, and then gentle. And you can also, if you're having a lot of pain, just leave your arms straight down and just let them rest for about a minute. That's what I would do. Um, I recommend that and some easy, simple warm-ups. Uh, warm-ups are good because they just, they warm you up. So just like being a vocalist, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but just something to slightly get you back in there. So let me make sure that Facebook can see me. And sometimes if you're playing all the time, that's almost a warm-up in itself, but okay, cool. Hi, Facebook. Oh, hi, Lisa. Awesome. I think that's Carl. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. And one of them's in a, a language I cannot understand. Um, I wish I could, though. I'm sorry. Um, all right, cool. So the warm-ups that I like to use, I um, just like to switch them up a little bit. I've talked about them before. They're really easy. They're the best. Um, they just never fail you. So just these quasi-chromatic... <laughs> And you can go crazy and do them all the way up the guitar, or you can just kind of do them in one position. It really depends on you. The biggest recommendation I have for that is why I love that exercise is because it's kind of brainless. Like you just kind of can do it while you're watching TV or, you know, warming up. And I'm doing all alternate picking. So I'm a strong believer in alternate picking. <laughs> So it's kind of mindless, but it's really making sure that you're doing that alternate picking. The other way to make this more exciting and to kind of not get stuck in a, you know, a rut or anything is to switch up the finger numbers. So I know uh, teachers that I've had in the past have even said, unless this was me saying it, but they've said to like take those finger numbers. So they would be one, two, three, and four. So one, two, three, and four. And mix them up, even if you need to put them in a hat or just ask anybody, ask your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your friend or your mom and dad, whoever, um, ask them for a random 
order of those numbers, like two, three, one, four, and then try that. And that really can change the way that you look at it. Or backwards. You know, so whatever you can do, if you want to go and go for that, I like to do two different strings. Um, if you want to go further than that, you can string skip. Right, so you can go faster and faster and faster. Um, typically, I like to do it all the way from 1 to 12. So uh, I'll spare you because that won't be very exciting. But when you get there, you shift up a half step. Then up a half step. Then up a half step. Then up a half step. So it keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up. Um, I do that all the way to the 12th fret and then back. So I can understand if that doesn't sound exciting for you. But at least doing a little bit of it will get you warmed up. So you want to be in a good spot when you're practicing. All right. Let's see. Cool. I think the sound is better, so I'm glad. Awesome. Hi, Betty. Um... Guarv, I did a whole lesson on modes. So if you go to this one, um, I do have to kind of stick to the topic. But if you do go, oh, I'm pretty sure it is. You're saying you can't hear me? I'm pretty sure it's really loud. Um, on the other end, they're saying they can. So let me know if that still happens. But go to youtube.com slash guitar control. And I have a whole lesson, one of these live streams on modes. So check that out. And again, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, do you do that each time you play? Defenders ask me if I do that every time I play. Not anymore. I used to. I used to really die hard do that. And now the more that I teach and everything, I'm kind of warmed up a lot. So I don't always, but if, say, I've taken, I feel like I'm, like, out of shred shape or something, I do do that. And I get back in. But I don't do it all the time anymore because I'm playing so much. Uh, my voice is breaking. Uh, I don't think so. If anybody else can hear that, maybe let me know, but it might be your internet connection, so let me check. Um, okay, maybe somebody else comment and let me know, but I'm pretty sure it's good. Okay, so I'm going to check in on Facebook. Hello, Edward. Hello, Trevor. That's awesome. Asheville. I've been there once. It's really cool forget where we were oh I don't remember it was a big um some big famous like hiking hill place but it was really cool um Michael your arm goes numb from lost circulation um when you're playing or all the time I would say I um had tendonitis in both my wrists and it was awful um from over practicing and just not doing things the right way. So whenever I get a topic like this, I really like this topic because I think there's a couple things that people can just tell you that are really easy. And I think sometimes people don't tell you stuff and got to figure out the hard way. So for me, um, I was surrounded by people acting like, oh, you got to be tough like the guys and you got to, you know, get through your pain and stuff. And, um, you know, that's obviously not true. Um, let me make sure that this sound is good really quick. Um... Okay, I guess, um, I'm sorry, I guess the audio was weird for a second and it's fine now. So hopefully it's still fine for you now. Um, all right, just when you play, if your numb's going, I don't think you should be going numb when you're playing. That's kind of scary. I would say definitely start stretching and taking breaks and maybe build up the strength um, within that. So when you're, you know, I would really try that. I would try, for me, I had to start all over and it really, really wasn't fun, but I ended up coming out on top and being better than I was and um, having a lot better technique. So I think just a few things that you can do that will slow it down. And we'll talk about them today. So hopefully that helps you. But um, maybe you're too cold. I would say be warm. Like there's all those stories about Eddie Van Halen always putting his hands in, um, in dark eyes. <laughs> okay. Um, putting his hands in hot water before he plays and stuff too. Because sometimes when you're in the cold, it's harder. All right. Awesome. All right. So the next thing that I was going to talk about is um, practicing smart. And this kind of goes, I have two topics that I wrote down that are two points that I wrote down that are pretty much the same thing to me, I guess. So practicing smart and isolating changes. So practicing smart is 
don't overdo it. Like don't do too much. So when you have something that you're doing, like if it's a long lick, don't overdo just that one part. Um, oh, Max Patch is where I was in North Carolina. <laughs> it's very cool. Um, all right, so isolating changes. So if I'm doing a lick, I always like these licks because they helped me a lot when I was starting out and I still like to use them. Um, I liked Paul Gilbert because he was really nice and he, um, I always think it's kind of lame when there's guitar players that are really good but they're not cool and they're weird about it. And I always thought he had a really good attitude about guitar and just, you know, he's a virtuoso but he's really funny. And I always thought that was cool um, and encouraging because why not? So his lick that he was always doing was like, right? I really loved that one. So just, I'm on the sixth string, fifth fret, five, seven, eight, and I'm alternate picking. Then I'm dropping down to the fifth string just once on the fifth fret, and then back, eight, seven, five. So um, all right, let's see. Let me know if this is a little too loud, so I'm gonna turn that down. Right, and then he would practice that, practice that, practice that, and then spin him up. And you can add things to them. But the cool thing I think about this is, I remember hearing somebody talk about this, and they were saying the hardest part for them was that one part. And to me, the fact that you could just practice that, that would be really cool. So not practicing everything, if you're already doing something fast and flawless, why keep beating that and beating that and beating that? So why not just go and really concentrate on what can clean that up. Why is that messy? Why is it sloppy? Why isn't it clean? And just practicing that movement and isolating that specific part. So going, okay, if I just lifted my pinky a little bit more, I can get a lot cleaner. Or, or experimenting until you get it. And then going, okay, now that I've isolated that, and that can take seriously just one minute. So going, okay, I spent one minute doing that, and now I can play it better for the rest of my life. So practicing smart is not overdoing things. You know, if you're pra if you're learning an entire solo, but there's only one lick that's hard for you, don't practice the whole solo over and over and over and over because you're really just skipping through that lick and you're not really improving. So take that one part that's hard for you and really focus on that and break that down. That's what I would do. Um, the other thing that I really swear by is playing slow to play fast. So I'm actually going to check in on you guys one more time. Um, thank you, Jeff. He said he loves this ESP LTD guitar. Me too. Um, hi, Raymond. I think this guitar is awesome. It's really fun to play too. Have you ever suffered with carpal tunnel? Okay, sorry, I think I might have gotten this late. Um, teaching White Wedding would be awesome. And Gwarb, can you hear me now? Is it better now? Um, it should be better now. Uh, have I ever suffered with carpal tunnel symptoms? Yes, I did. And if so, what have you done to alleviate that? Uh, I really had it bad, so um, my situation is probably different than yours. Like, I did actually have a pretty serious case of it, and I, um, couldn't play guitar for, oh, jeez, I want to say it was, like, eight months. It was really bad, um, and it sucked, and, um, I learned a lot from it, so that was good, but, um, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, you're never gonna play fast, you're never gonna do this. I ended up going to a doctor. I had a teacher at the time. I was, had a lot of teachers at this time because I was in uh, school, um, guitar school. So I was going to guitar school and I had a teacher that was really into deep muscle tissue massage. And I guess that is good for some people, but, um, you know, I was getting all these pains and I was supposed to go do that. And, um, I ended up having, I just got misdiagnosed and I had someone working on my wrist that was pretty much, um, not doing what I needed. And, uh, you know, they told me at the time that, oh, you should just, you should be doing that all the time. And so I was overdoing it because I wanted to play guitar so bad and it ended up really hurting me. And I had to take a pretty long break. And then I ended up getting a good doctor and I got a cortisone shot in each of my arms, which you're not supposed to do, so don't do that. Uh, just a really small one. I went to a doctor that was pretty cool and he did like a quarter of one and uh, wasn't allowed to play for a little while. And then I slowly, slowly built it up and now it's like it never happened. The one thing I would say that I learned from all of this, that I would not get a shot. Um, I only had to because I had about 10 months of people uh, hurting my arms, <laughs> so I would not do that. But the biggest things that did help me are sleeping in those arm guards. I had to wear arm guards all the time, so it looked like I was ready to rollerblade all the time. It was not cool. 
Um, but I, sleeping in those helps a lot. So not wearing them maybe all day in your day-to-day -day life, but sleeping in them helps a lot if I ever get any pain. Um, I don't, I really don't anymore, knock on wood, but, um, in the past, if I did, I would do that. Or Tramiel from Whole Foods. I think you can probably get it on Amazon, I'm sure, too. But it's spelled T-R-A-U-M-E-E-L, um, and it's just a gel thing, and you put it on your wrist, and it's a temporary pain reliever. That helps, and putting it here on your, you know, muscles from your neck all the way down. So I would do that. So, I mean, your neck, your muscles go down, but I would just put them right here on your shoulders and on your wrists, and that really helps. So those are the two things, and icing. I would definitely do that. Um, thank you, Pat, that's awesome. Base is here, thanks, thanks, Mike. Thank you, Michael, I'm glad you guys can all hear me. That's good. Um, let me check in here. Yeah, okay, cool. Gorva, I couldn't tell if you are yelling at me because you're using all caps. <laughs> and John, white wedding would be awesome. I will throw that out there and see what, what I'm told, if it makes the cut. But yes, um, as always, you guys, if you want, throw in topics that you want to learn. Um, sometimes they wind up in these live streams. All these topics that I'm doing are live streams that you guys sent in. Um, and sometimes it winds up in a video. So make sure you throw that. I'm also going to give you guys a discount code for hanging out with me today. So thank you so much. Um, and then we'll play a little bit more, of course, because I think it's been a lot of talking, so I'll make sure I play. But um, thank you so much for checking this out. This is to a very cool... Um, DVD called Killer Guitar Control Secrets and it's all about playing from your heart. So this is something that I think is really cool um, and that I believe in a lot. So here it is for Facebook. This is three things that we'll go over. Technique. So technique is, you know, kind of what we're talking about right now. Um, speed picking, tremolo picking, hammer on pull off, vibrato, all those things are techniques and they're all things to kind of add to your arsenal of things. So, you know, the next thing would be scales. So scales, you know your scales, but your technique would be how you play, you know, whatever you apply. Um, and then hand, <laughs> hand brain connection. So hand brain connection is getting what's in your head out of your hands. So whatever you want to do on the guitar, finding your own voice, that's the best way I could describe this. It's all about finding your voice on the guitar. And that, to me, was my biggest breakthrough, was when I finally felt like I found my own voice. Because you have all these heroes, like Hendrix and Clapton and Paige and everybody, um, and anybody, Steve Vai, and you wonder, how did they become who they are? And this is an insight on how to become who you want to become. So the guitarist that you want to be. Um, all right, let's see. Ma'am, I want to make a career in music as a guitarist. Please suggest what should I do. Um, I think that you should put your music out there and write and practice and play with other people. That's what I would say. Um, for me, uh, you never know what it can be. For me, I was playing a lot and I was kind of like a, a hired gun for a little bit and doing things here and there. And then I started doing videos on Instagram and I thought it was gonna be nothing. I just thought whatever. I was teaching guitar all the time and I had a little break in my lesson and I made a little video clip and I said Insta Jam or something and then I started getting more and more hits on things and um, it led me to some job opportunities with guitar. So that's what I would say is anything to put yourself out there. So find a way and find your thing and be patient and work hard at it. All right. So uh, we will answer more questions in a little bit. So Yes, anything that you can do. So practicing slow and knowing what you're playing. So, hi Sean. So what I was showing you before when I said, okay, that Paul Gilbert lick has all these extensions. I like when he does this one. So he goes, so, I'm going on the sixth string, five, seven, eight, then up to the fifth string, five, seven, go. Oh. So the same look we did before. Then the next time I go back up, but then on the fifth string I go five, seven, eight, back, down. So what I noticed is I was getting a little bit of feedback. So what I did was the third time I just slightly muted and that killed it. So that's what I'm saying is practicing smart, going okay, and realizing, listening, and thinking about what you can hear. Also practicing with a clean tone is probably the best because it's the least flattering. So that's a good way to also hear anything. All right. We talked about going slow to fast. 
So I think someone had just asked a question about a metronome. Let me see. Any advice on a good free metronome? I think I just deleted my free one from my phone. Let me see. I did have one, but I'm pretty sure mine was called Metronome Plus, I think, but I don't think it was free. It might have been like a dollar. So I would maybe check out that one, or any of them should be pretty good. I, I actually liked, I spent um, too much on a metronome because I was I wanted to make sure I used it. <laughs> and so I like those uh, Tama ones that are like the drummer ones because it gets so tedious to press the button up and up and up. But I mean, I guess I'm sure you can find an app or something that you don't have to do that anymore. Jump Chuchi is awesome. That is true. All right. So um, did I give you that YouTube? I want to make sure I pinned it. Yes. Okay, cool. And I pinned it to the top of Facebook. Awesome. Yes. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash guitar control and a bunch of free videos all the time. Um, in about, let's see how we're doing on time. In like nine minutes, we'll do the Q&A. So let me know if you have any questions directly about this topic, and in nine minutes, I'll answer all your other questions. So we went over stretching, taking breaks, and also, um, this is going to probably sound really cheesy, but one thing that I also like to make a point of is, and the best practice routines and anything, is make it fun for yourself. So if you're not having fun playing, you're probably not going to practice. So always have a goal and something that you want. So even if your life goal is not to be a professional guitar player and to be a crazy guitar player, but say you just want to learn songs, really know what you want to do. And I like what I do with my students is even if they want to learn something that's way out of reach, but they absolutely love this song, I will find any way to get them to play it, even just the bass notes or anything that they can do. So always have a goal and practice slowly to that. You know, and um, I also, I always say this, but it's really truly something that I totally 100% am behind. Um, thanks, Michael. Uh, is something that I'm totally behind is jam tracks. So I love having something behind me, you know, even if you make your own, just having some kind of progression behind you. I don't have one behind me right now, but that would, would have been my progression behind me. So um, having something behind you where you can be creative and write towards too. So for me, I really like recording or having something where I can record myself and then layer over myself or jamming with my fiance or your friends, you know, find someone that else that plays that's into something that you're into and always have a goal. I would say always have a goal and that makes practicing a lot more fun because otherwise if you have no goal, it's, you don't really feel like you achieve something. Looper pedals are good. Sing Barney and Friends theme song now. No. <laughs> um, but that's a weird suggestion. And I don't know it, to be fair. All right. So, yes, thank you guys for hanging out. Um, again, I'm, I'm just going to give you guys those tips one more time. So my tips were to practice smart, to isolate these changes. And that goes with chords too. So I talked a lot about lead playing, but um, just today I was teaching a girl um, that song Bubbly by Colby Calais. And it's a pretty simple song, one that you guys probably aren't interested in, but just a few chords. And she was just starting out, and so just listen to the situation, of course. Um, a major to A major 7. That was something she had never done before, and maybe you haven't either. So that was the only part of the song that was giving her a hard time, because she already knew her A chord, she knows her D chord, and the progression is A, A major 7, D, um, A. So right, starts and ends with A. Um, so I had her stop for a second and just play A major to A major 7, and really focus and look at that chord and go, okay, so you know, think of things that are in common. So, you know, we were talking about leads, and now I want to just say this for chords, too. This goes for any chords, harder chords than this, whatever chord. So this A major and A major 7 both have this note in common. The ring finger on the second string, third, uh, second string, second fret. So I leave that down, and then try to see similarities. So for me, I always say in the air when I'm lifting my fingers, I try to visualize in the air where I'm going. And then I just kind of, you know, after a while, muscle memory kicks in and you don't really need that. So I lift my middle finger up a string at the same time that I drag my ring or my pointer down a string and over a fret. So I move from all three fingers scrunched in this second fret 
the fourth, third, and second string to leaving my ring finger down and at the same time simultaneously moving my middle and my pointer like this. So from here to here, right? Here to here. And the cool thing about muscle memory on the guitar, um, the good and bad thing, is sometimes you don't want that. You don't want to do something that you're not thinking about. You don't you know, sometimes if you're practicing the wrong way, I guess my point is, if you're practicing the wrong way, you might always go back to that by accident and go over and over and over. It drives you crazy because in your head, you know that you're not supposed to do that. So make sure that you isolate these changes and learn things right the first time. And see it just slowing something down like that and then being able to speed it up, it'll become so easy and second nature. And that, you know, in that sense, you'll use muscle memory to your advantage and you won't need to think about those things anymore. So that's what I would recommend. Um, work on things, you know, same thing for the leads. And practicing slow to practice fast. Um, I, I practice that lick like a crazy person. Um, but the benefit of that is now when I get speed picking parts, they're not that hard for me. Um, well, not as hard as other things are for me because I spend a lot of time on that. So isolate things, spend time on them, but spend the right amount of time. So don't waste time playing the same thing for hours and doing it wrong. Slow it down. You know, trying to play something fast that you're just not ready for. So slow it down, then speed it up. Um, practice isolating those changes. So just spend a little bit of time. You know, I had a teacher that wouldn't let anybody in the class play anything. Like he wouldn't let you move on if you couldn't play it eight times perfect. So that's also kind of a good one too, because you will learn how to play it perfect because you don't want to keep starting over. So even if you were at seven and you played it wrong, you'd have to start over and play it eight times perfect. So just little things like that can really help. But yeah, stretch, keep it fun. Um, practicing should be fun. You know, I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes I dread it until I'm doing it. And then I'm like, oh, why do I, why do I complain about this? It's probably like working out. You don't want to do it. And then you're like, oh, but I feel good. You know, so it's a good thing to do. So slow down, um, practice smart, isolate those changes, slow to fast, take breaks, stretch, and have fun. So now we'll do the Q&A, and one more time before we do that Q&A, I am going to give you guys the code to Killer Guitar Control Secrets. So this is all about playing from your heart. So I know that, you know, a lot of magazines and stuff are just telling you how to play like other people. That's not what this is about. This is for the person that wants their own voice on the guitar and just doesn't know how to get it. So it's a ton of good techniques, ton of good, um, or sorry, tips on techniques, fretboard knowledge, and so it's three steps, techniques, fretboard knowledge, and hand-brain connection. So getting what's in your head out of your hands um, and really becoming you. The, it's really about how did Eric Clapton become Eric Clapton? How did Jimmy Page become Jimmy Page? So again, you don't want to sound just like any of those people because they exist. So this is about being the best you. Um, Facebook, I had to refresh you, so I will check on you in one second and give you that code. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash guitar control. Go ahead and click that bell and you'll get notifications when we have a new video up. So myself and other instructors, send us requests for what you want to learn, um, videos for me to do in these live streams or videos that you'll see on our page. And thank you guys. I really appreciate you guys coming back every week. Um, I see a lot of the same people and it's really cool. All right, I'm going to throw this in Facebook one more time. So now I will do a little Q&A if you're all hanging out. And then uh, other than that, I'll be back next Tuesday with a new topic. So let's see, is musicality and techniques related? Um, yeah, I would say so. I think um, musicality, when people use that term, they're more so saying they want to hear something musical. So sometimes technique, I think it's always a weird thing because sometimes technique people get weird about or act like, well, someone has good technique, but they're not musical, so they don't like it or something like that. Um, you definitely want to be both, you know, um, they only help each other out. So you don't want to be so technical that you never write anything memorable, but you also don't want to, I mean, why not write really memorable stuff and have great technique? So I think they should be hand in hand and you should be aware of both and work on both. So if you were going to work on being musical, I would say really try and be creative and don't limit yourself and don't worry about things. Don't worry about messing up or anything like that and have, you know, jam with someone. Like I was saying that I would jam with my fiance or you know, you might have a best friend that plays guitar, or you might just want a loop pedal, or you might want to write your own song and, you know, be in Pro Tools and have, you know, your own rhythm behind you. But have something behind you so that you can really get the full picture and just loop it so you can really create. And that will help you become more musical. 
and just hearing things and mixing techniques. Like I like to add in techniques into my own playing that I think are interesting and I pull them from people that I think are really good or I try to mix two different people's styles or my style with two different things. You know, like I really like pinch harmonics and I'm sure I got that from being a metal kid and listening to Zach Wilde a lot and I always thought that's so cool. I don't think mine sound just like his, but I think, you know, I thought that that was a really cool touch that he did. I liked that Paul Gilbert does um, tap slides. Oops, sorry. He did that in the, that like Green did 60s Vine, there's a part where it's like, and they tap and slide, so all you have to do, right, just tap and slide. Um, I think that's cool, so bring it into your own play. And then I like to, I, I just like slides, so I would try to slide randomly somewhere that I don't think normally there's a slide or create something that you think is really cool. That's what I would recommend. Um, but technique, I think, is just is important, too. Um, oh, thank you, John. That's really cool. I appreciate that. Um, how much does a different, how much of a difference does it make practicing through an amp or not? Um, I like practicing through an amp because you can really hear yourself. I would say, um, why wouldn't you use your amp? You know, I mean, if you're in a situation where you can't be loud, it's better to practice than not practice, of course. Um, but maybe headphones would be better in that situation. But an amp really picks up everything. So sometimes you might not realize that if you had an amp, that would be buzzing or something like that. So I do think it is important to practice with an amp. I always do. And I, and it's, I think it's more fun. So I think practicing in general is good, but I think, you know, that would be better. Uh, James, yes, this is an ESP. So I think you guys asked me a lot. This guitar, I love this guitar. So this guitar is very cool. Um, my fiance plays for ESP and uh, they gave me this one, which I thought was really cool. They wanted someone that to use it that um, liked metal and like sparkles and it was me <laughs> so I got really lucky but this guitar is super fun and easy to play I would definitely recommend picking one up it's an LTD Deluxe um, it's awesome it's an ESP it's great it's really fun and really easy to play um, I've been enjoying using it a lot I know that um, I have a custom guitar a custom Menard guitar I really love but um, I didn't have fret markers on it and some of you complain about no fret markers so this guitar I've been using a lot and it's been really fun to use in these lessons um, no fret markers, I guess it is hard though when you're watching it. I do think it looks cool, but um, yeah. Um, James, yeah, um, James said he's been playing for 23 years and he still has to practice. I think everybody should should always still practice, I would say. Oh, I think I lost a question. I think someone asked me about how much, oh, can, whoever asked the question about theory, can you, oh, wait, let me see if I can see all. Sometimes I can't, so. Um, on Facebook, for some reason, when we are live, it's only showing me about five comments. So if I don't answer your question, try and send it again. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't let me. I'm sorry. It's really frustrating. But I think someone was asking how much I think theory is important. Um, I do think it's important. Um, I mean, it, but it depends. You know, I've been asked this before, and it really depends because some people are so just musically natural and don't know any theory and they are great players and there's nothing wrong with that but it does help you in situations like say you really learned this one solo this one way and you're playing it live and you don't really know what key you're in or anything and then all of a sudden you're out of luck and you don't know what to do so if you don't know any scales at all you have nowhere to go so I think one of the things that helps has helped me the most over time um, just playing with different players of all different levels in all different backgrounds, is um, I didn't play with a lot of people that went to school, and it was always this weird thing, like, well, why did I go to school? Like, I mean, obviously, you don't need it, I guess, you know, but it did help me in situations, but you can, you know, get that from practicing and learning from anything, like learning from us here right now. Any advice or anything I think is good, and I guess it's a, just a different school. But one thing that helped me a lot was always being able to find where I was, and if, you know, we got out of place, I knew a scale and I could improvise. So. For me, I would say working on your ear is the number one most important thing. Having a good ear is really important. Um, just as important, maybe, as knowing your theory and stuff. But also just being able to go with the flow. And if you have to, you know, have some kind of 
way to improvise in a situation is always good if you're a lead guitar player. But um, yes, I do think it's important, but you know, um, I also am a strong believer in that you should learn the guitar however you want to learn the guitar. I think you should mix both because there's some people that are so good at theory and they don't know anything about being creative and vice versa. Um, all right, let me check on YouTube. That was Facebook. All right. Um, <laughs> will I be blessing you with my voice today? <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know what to sing today. Um, studio monitors are good. I've been, I've been playing for 33 years. That's awesome. Yep, don't you ever stop learning. It's really, really good to just always, you know, um, I, I know I already brought up Paul Gilbert, but I remember seeing a Paul Gilbert article where he was taking lessons from a blues instructor randomly because he just wanted something out of his element. And you'd think somebody like that, like a Steve Vai or a Paul Gilbert, you'd be like, taking a lesson? What? But um, I think for me, what that was kind of showing me was that there's always room to learn for everybody. And to be so good at one thing, it's hard to be good at everything. You know, say you're a killer blues player, you might not know some metal techniques or jazz techniques or pop techniques or anything, R&B, funk, you know. And so one really cool thing too that I've said before is play with someone that's different than you and either as good or better than you um, because that will really throw you out of your comfort zone. Like uh, I brought up that I was doing those Instagram videos and stuff when I met my fiance, he is a really, really excellent guitar player and he plays way different than me and he um, is in a band and he had a really great knowledge of pedals and I was more, you know, nerdy, like went to school, play guitar. And um, when we started collaborating, his solos would be so different than mine. And I would bring my solo in and be ready to show him so he could go put this video together. And his would be like totally crazy and so innovative. And I would feel like, oh my gosh, mine is so boring. And then I would go back in the room and it would push me to write something cooler or think outside of the box and think outside of my element. So it took me from being like, well, here's my bag of tricks and what I normally do or what I think to do. And it really helped push me to go, okay, well, wait a second. That's like a whole new world of guitar. So anything that you can do like that, push yourself to learn something new, push yourself to play with someone totally different than you and really go into that with an open mind, like to learn something. I think that's where you're going to benefit the most always. But yes, keep an open mind. I would say a hundred percent and no ego. Um, sing she again? <laughs> no. Um, you guys want me to sing now? It is a compliment, but I don't know if I want to sing she. Let's see. All right, I'm going to check on Facebook. Let's see. I think I went to the wrong Awesome. Yes. So thank you guys so much. Um, I appreciate you guys checking all these out. Again, I will be back on Tuesday at 7 Central. So thank you guys for tuning in. Please leave comments. Let us know. Um, what about jamming with a sax player? Why not? That You should actually. There was a really great um, saxophone player when I was going to, I went to MI and there was a really good sax, well, there's a really good guitar player. And this kid would be like, come in early every day, just kill it when we had these live um, performances and stuff. And he would he was so different sounding than all of us because he would constantly go and learn sax parts and put them on guitar. So that's also something is think outside the box. Like it doesn't have to be, music is supposed to be fun and creative. And sometimes we get caught up in competing with other people or feeling like we have to or making it like a sport. And it's really supposed to be, you know, your time of day that's relaxing and expressing yourself. And it should be fun. It should always be fun, even when it's hard and you're pushing yourself. But yeah. Think outside of the box. One of my best friends plays violin, and we played together, and it was super fun. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate you guys hanging out. I'm going to give you that discount code one more time. Again, leave comments. Let us know what topics are the most fun, um, what you want to learn more of, and if some of you had questions I had already answered,